Zuper offers a no-code experience for organizations to create and configure standard operating procedures and business process workflows to enforce quality control, consistency, and governance. One of the most important aspects of the business process workflows is the job or work order checklist. The checklist enables organizations to define discrete task lists, configure checkpoints, and instructions for the technicians operating on the work order or the job. In this video, we'll look into how to create and configure a checklist and associate with the job or work order status. I'm on the settings page in the Zuper web application. To access the job checklist studio, I click on job checklist under custom fields and checklist settings. It opens the checklist studio in Zuper. This has three sections, available components that includes all the available components supported for the checklist, the checklist canvas and the category. If I select a job category, it displays the list of the status configured in this category. On selecting the status, it displays the list of the checklists created and configured for the status. If there are no checklists configured, it shows up as empty. Zuper enables organizations to create and configure these checklists per job status, per job category or type. This is super powerful as it offers great flexibility, control and governance at a granular level. Now let's pick a status in which the checklist is already configured. I see the checklist configured here for job started status, which indicates the technicians will have to perform these steps when they start the job. Let's add a new item to this checklist. We'll pick the radio input component, drag and drop this on the top. Once the component is added to the canvas, we can configure this by clicking on the component and filling out the information. It requires a label, description, which is optional, the options for the component, whether it needs to be disabled from the technicians. We can mark this as a dependent field, which indicates that it has a dependency on the values from another item in the checklist. And we can also mark this as mandatory or optional. Let's start filling out this information. I'm going to leave the description empty and create the options. Yes, no. Do not want to hide it from the technicians there is no dependent field and I'm going to mark this as required. The component is now configured. I hit the save button to save the component to the canvas. Let's add one more item to this checklist. This time we are going to use the picture component and configure the settings. Call this before picture. Let's add the description. I'll make this a dependent field. And this is dependent to the previous item that we just configured. Is the HVAC system fully operational before cleaning? And we'll require the picture only when the answer is no to the previous question. And this is a mandatory field. Let's go ahead and save this. The checklist items are now created and configured for this job status. Let's look at this checklist view type. It can be a single page or a multi-page. Single page indicates all these checklist items will be displayed on a single page on the technician's mobile application. Multi-page indicates each question will appear on a page of its own and on selecting the values of the question, it will navigate to the next page. For this purpose, let's select the single page view because I want the technicians to see all these items on a single page. 
I'll now go ahead and save this checklist. This checklist is now published and live, and it'll appear on the technician's mobile application in real time. Similarly, a new checklist can be added on a different status. For example, on job completed, there is a different set of checklist items, which indicates the list of tasks or steps that the technicians will have to perform on the completion of the job. Now let's look at the component types supported by the Zuper Checklist Studio. To do this, let's select a status that does not have any checklists configured. We'll drag and drop each one of these items and look into them. Single line input. This is for single line text, numeric or alphanumeric values. We also allow validation to enforce only numeric values on this single line input. Multi-line input is to collect multiple lines of text. Time input is for collecting time information. Date input is for collecting date information. Date time input is for both date and time in a single component. Dropdown is a picker list to select from a predefined list of values. Radio input or option input is to select from a mutually exclusive list of values defined. Checkbox input is to select multiple items from the list. The picture component is to upload a picture either by taking it from the camera or selecting a picture from the gallery. And last but not the least, the barcode component is to scan QR or barcode and attaching that to the item. To recap, in this video, we showcased how you can create and configure checklists in Zuper and associate that with job or work order status and categories and publish the checklist so that it can be consumed by the field or back office users. Thank you.